this video is not about the top 5 things to do in Krakow. There are already so many videos out there. This video is about Krakow and its dark past. I was always fascinated with the stories from World War II. That's why I came all the way to Krakow to see for myself what has happened here and how it must have been for the people who lived here at that time. The former capital city of Poland and the seat of Polish kings is a majestic city. As one of the oldest cities in the country, it is a gem of national cultural heritage which draws a multitude of tourists from all over the world. Jews arrived in Krakow in the late 13th century among German immigrants traveling on a commercial route to Prague. Kazimierz, located on the outskirts of Krakow, became the main center for Jewish settlement. By the 14th century, they established an organized community and became part of Polish-German cultural life in Krakow. Jews were the largest minority in Poland. In Poland's major cities, Jews and Poles spoke each other languages and interacted in markets and on the streets. That did not mean that anti-Semitism did not impact the lives of Polish Jews, but Jews were part of Poland and Poland culture was in part Jewish. This place in the center of the Jewish district was used in the movie Schindler's List. From Wawel Hill, it's just a short walk to the Kazimierz district, the Jewish epicenter of Krakow for over 500 years. The streets of the old Jewish city still evoke a sense of the past, the old town square which was the center of the Jewish life in Kazimierz. You will find some places here which were left the way they used to be. I think that's a good thing because one should never forget the past to make our future better. Upon the German invasion of Poland, the German army occupied Krakow in the first week of September 1939. On 6 September 1939, Krakow surrendered to the German armed forces without a fight and later it was proclaimed the capital of Nazi-occupied Poland. Unlike other Polish cities, the Nazi army had no interest in destroying its infrastructure. Hans Frank was appointed Governor General by Adolf Hitler. Frank established his headquarters in the Wawel Castle in Krakow. The German military authorities initiated immediate measures aimed at isolating, exploiting and persecuting the Jews of the city. At the start of World War II, there were 60,000 Jews living in Krakow one-fourth of the entire population. In April 1940, an order was given for Jews to evacuate Krakow within four months. Krakow became the capital of Nazi-occupied Poland. Throughout the occupied areas, the Germans made Jews to wear a batch of shame, armbands with the Star of David on their lapels, in order to identify them as Jews and were sent to forced labor. They were steadily dispossessed of their possessions and deprived of their sources of livelihood, apartments, factories and small businesses, cultural and artistic treasures were seized. They were discriminated in the society and systematically deprived of everything and were forced to leave their homes with only the things they could carry. In early March 1941, the Germans ordered the establishment of a ghetto to be situated in Podgorze, a southern suburb of Krakow, rather than in Kazimierz. Germans had concentrated the remaining Jews of Krakow and thousands of Jews from other towns in the ghetto. Jews living in towns and villages were to be transferred to ghettos. They were enclosed by barbed wire fences and newly built stone walls. So it was on bridges like these that people were made to drag everything they had and then move from the Jewish quarters into the ghetto. We are right now inside the ghetto and walking. The Warsaw ghetto was completely destroyed. There's nothing left right now. But some buildings here in the Krakow ghetto still exist the way they used to be. They were made to live in cramped quarters and put on a starvation diet. Each person was only allowed to get 480 calories per day. Josefinska is one of the biggest streets inside the ghetto. And walking here inside the ghetto knowing what has happened on these same streets gives you a horrific and a weird feeling. As a person who walked every lane in the ghetto, it's not a really big area. It's such a small and confined place to live for 60,000 people. Four guarded entrance gates access the ghetto. So what's behind me is the main entrance that used to be here to enter the ghetto. A tram initially ran through the ghetto and through it made no stops. Food and other valuable commodities frequently found their way into the ghetto via its windows from the Polish people. The upper part of the ghetto wall was erected in the form of Jewish tombstones which were built by the Jewish people from the ghetto. 
as the Germans with cruel symbolism made it clear what fate awaits the Jews in these falls. There were several industrialists like Oskar Schindler and Julius Matrich who helped save several lives. Steven Spielberg made a movie named Schindler's List on this story and on him. This Krakow ghetto pharmacy owned by Tadeusz Pankiewicz, a Polish pharmacist and the only Jewish person who was allowed by the German administration to live and work within the ghetto. Pankiewicz supplied the necessary medicines to the Krakow ghetto and also provided Jews with provisions, temporary shelter and even forged documents saving human lives. On mid-March 1943, the SS and the police planned to liquidate the Krakow ghetto and carried out the operation, shooting some 2,000 Jews inside the ghetto. If you've seen the movie Schindler's List, you will see a part in the movie where the Nazis come and kill everybody in the hospital. Now the building behind me used to be that hospital. Everybody including the kids, the old, the patients, the nurses, the doctors, everybody were killed. The Nazis just came inside and shot everybody to death. Such horrific things. They were assembled at this square and were killed here or sent to forced labor or death camps. The children were separated from their parents and most of them were killed. So when the Krakow ghetto was being liquidated, so many people thought they were going to wait long here and that's why they bought the chairs with them. And this place is like a memorial for them and that's why we have chairs here. Now each chair represents 1000 Jews who were bought here and then killed. And there are 33 chairs overall here at this square. So the building you see behind me used to be a Jewish police headquarters inside the ghetto. The Nazis made the Jews themselves police inside the ghetto. But the Jewish population did not like them as they thought they were traitors. Those who were capable of working were sent to Platzow forced labor camp and others were deported to Auschwitz-Birkenau killing center or to the Belzec death camp. Just going to this place looks and feels so depressing. Even the area around it is really isolated, it's away from the city and it's really sad. The camp was notorious for its terrors. Amon Goth was the camp commandant at this point. He was sadistic in his treatments and killing of prisoners. If a prisoner tried to escape the camp, God shot 10 prisoners as a punishment. Many prisoners died of typhus, starvation and from executions. When the Nazis realized the Soviets were approaching Krakow, they completely dismantled the camp, leaving only an empty field. This campsite was completely destroyed. Unlike Auschwitz, you can't find any buildings here. So the people from the ghetto went to the main square, which we saw earlier in this video. And from there, they were sent here or to Auschwitz. Now Auschwitz is away from the city, it's quite far away, but this one, Platzow, is very near to the Krakow city. It's less than 10 kilometers away from the main city square. And unlike Auschwitz, there are no gas chambers here. People were just shot dead on the spot. This being here gives you goosebumps and an eerie feeling. Knowing what has happened here in the past and what the people might have gone through here. Uh, but at the same time, we must respect history and uh, we must uh, learn from our mistakes. Auschwitz, the name that gives goosebumps, was literally hell on earth. From 1942 until late 1944, freight trains delivered Jews from all over German-occupied Europe to its gas chambers. Of the 1.3 million people sent to Auschwitz, 1.1 million were murdered. Those not gassed were murdered via starvation, disease or executions. Others were killed during medical experiments. Things that are so disturbing and inhumane one cannot imagine what the people here might have gone through. People were stripped naked and sent to gas chambers. Cyclone B, a poisonous gas, was dropped into the room from the ceiling. The SS officers told the victims they had to take a shower. The victims undressed in the dressing room and walked into the gas chamber. There were even signs which says bath or disinfection room. Some inmates were even given a soap and a towel. A gas chamber could kill 2,000 to 3,000 prisoners at a time. The corpses were buried in the nearby incinerators and the ashes were buried, thrown in the Vistula river or used as a fertilizer. Any bits of bone that had not burned properly were ground down in wooden mortars. As the Soviet troops approached, the SS units began the final evacuation of prisoners from Auschwitz, marching them on foot towards the interior of the German Reich. 
These forced evacuations came to be called as death marches and around 15,000 prisoners died during the evacuation marches. The Soviet army enters and liberates around 7,000 prisoners from Auschwitz, most of them who are ill and dying. Most of the Jews from Krakow were killed and only a few ever survived. And this is their story.